What you're not so happy about <coughs> is is the direction that the country's been going in since since when? Since Brian Mulroney, uh, 25 years, I would say. Uh, I I'm really worried about the direction we're going in, and that the whole book is <coughs> loaded with examples of health care, poverty, social spending, welfare, distribution of income, uh, corporate profits, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, showing that we're really going in the wrong direction. And I honestly feel if we keep selling off the country the way we have been in the past, that um, my children and uh, grandchildren will have the splendid opportunity of growing up as tenants in their own country. And I don't want to see that happen. Now, we're told all the time, and, and there was a big... Uh, Frufra not too long ago about the uh, anniversary of uh, the free trade deal mm -hmm. and uh, and how mm -hmm. wonderful it was for Canada and you know I read all the articles and went well you know I don't, I don't feel all that wonderful about it but I guess other people do so I guess uh, I guess it must be wonderful for Canada raw mm -hmm. us but you know I, as I said to somebody else the, the the problem with being the free trade deal is I feel like I was explaining to someone from Europe I said Canada is like the dinghy that finds itself. <laughs> tied to the back of the Titanic. We went for a free ride halfway across the ocean, but it's probably not going to get all that good from here on. Well, um, I think that the worst thing we could possibly do, if you read the conclusion of this book, you'll find that the same people who got us into the free trade agreement and the same people who got us into NAFTA are now having secret meetings behind closed doors. They've hired publicists and the publicists tell the participants, don't under any circumstances speak to the press. It's uh, so bad that even in the United States, 15 American states have appealed to George Bush to get out of these secret talks because they have nothing whatsoever to do with democracy. All they have to do with is big business taking over the ownership and control of the decision-making process. And that's exactly what has been happening in Canada for quite some time now. Uh, we're too good a country to let it go down the drain to selfish people who are greedy people who want nothing better than to uh, take over control of the decision-making process democratically or not. If you read the conclusion of the book, you'll be startled by how they're having secret meetings at which they're planning to integrate uh, Canada into the United States, literally. This is the security... And prosperity, prosperity. thing, yeah, whatever it's called. Uh, Heather Mellick calls it, what does she call it? She calls it the SPP, she calls it. Uh, it's a, a bad group of people who are uh, extreme right-wingers who want to integrate our country into the United States, want us to adapt American standards, American values, American policies. And uh, the interesting thing, and I show this in the book quite often, time after time after time after time, in public opinion polls, the Canadian people want something entirely different than our business elite. And yet, time after time after time, we get Mr. Mulroney and Mr. Chrétien and Mr. Martin, and now Mr. Harper, giving big business what they want. And, and well, it's a, it really interesting. If you were to take a blank piece of paper and draw a heavy line from the top left to the bottom right, you would see what's been happening to corporate taxes as a percentage of all taxes in Canada. And then, if you take the same big pencil, and mark it from the lower left to the top right, you get a perfect X. And that second line is how uh, much of an increase has been in personal individuals picking up the load of taxation in this country. And we, you'll see in the book that, that uh, taxes for corporations are now at the lowest level, uh, let's see, we're 27th of the 30 OECD countries. But I'm terms. always hearing that... Exactly, the, the reverse. They're always saying, oh, we're overtaxed, we're overtaxed, we're overtaxed, and, yeah. and that we're the most heavily... I mean, what's is the, this... What's, what's the title of my book? Yeah, The Truth. The Truth. I mean, that's that's why I wrote the book. I, could, I got to the point I couldn't stand hearing this garbage coming from the Conference Board of Canada, the C.D. Howe Institute, the Fraser Institute, the Canadian Council of Chief Executives. By the way, all those organizations that you read so much about in the paper, they have all one thing in common. They all get their money from the same place, from the same big companies, and they're all uh, tax-subsidized donations. Mel, um, is, there, is there hope? Is there something that, that an average person can do? Mm -hmm. What? There is. 
And I have a chapter in the back of the book called Democracy. And it's one of the most important chapters in the book. In the 2006 federal election, what percentage of adult Canadians made a donation to any political party? 0.075%. Less than 1% of adult Canadians made a donation to any political party. You're asking me what you can do? Do you want to get involved? Do you want to have some influence over the future of our country? 80% of Canadians have never belonged to any political party. Eight, 19 to 24, I guess the turnout in the last two federal elections has averaged 25%. We have not taught people how important it is to get involved in the political process and to make democracy work. Mel Herty, author of The Truth About Canada, some important, some astonishing, some truly appalling things all Canadians should know about our country, published by McClelland and Stewart.